In this video, I'm going to bring you inside of a property we just bought using very little of our own money. I'm showing you this video because I want you to see what the condition of these properties look like before we buy them so you aren't intimidated by the amount of work that needs to be done. This one, we just picked it up. It had trees everywhere. I'm gonna show you some of the before, what it looked like when we, just, when, we, when we actually bought it. It's only been a week now. And then I'll take you back to the office and go over some of the numbers so you can see what we bought it for what, our, what we forecast it to sell for and what the cost of the renovation is going to be. All right, let's do it. Okay class, it's Chris Haskins with therealestateroundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. So today we're going on a property. We just picked this up. I think we paid 203,000 for it. Shout out to the wholesaler we bought it from. I did not use my Geek Squad. This is one of deal that I bought from another wholesaler. I think we paid him $15,000 to bring it in. Thank you for this one. So the thing about real estate is you don't want one way to find all your deals. You want multiple ways. And wholesalers, not all of them, but some of them have still have good deals. So this property here is a four bedroom, two bath. It's gonna need a new roof. And we have done a ton of landscaping already. Let's walk around the side. You can see they cut a lot of this stuff down, look stuff back already. And the guy, when he sold it to us, left the property full of junk. This is just one dumpster here. You all right walking over this, Taylor? You can set it down. Thank you to my beautiful daughter for working with me today. You can see the exterior there is kind of, all the trees had grown up into, so I'm gonna show you the before picture. You'll see these trees, see how they all were right here? They had grown up into the side of the house ripping off the roof. It was crazy. In fact, come back here, Taylor, so they can see what it looked like from the top. Show them up there. So the trees were growing up all over the roof. So I don't know how much it's gonna be for landscaping, but it ain't gonna be cheap. So, oh yeah, new roof, yeah, that's gonna be at least eight grand. Maybe about 8,000. Yeah. You don't, want the, you don't want your microphone, Taylor? So this tree here, two more that were growing all up here. In fact, I couldn't even see that. See that bad, that damaged siding? I didn't even, I wasn't able to see that. I missed that. So it's gonna need new windows, new roof. Look at all this vegetation that has grown. I mean, all this was just over. You couldn't even see the back of the house actually. And I'll show you those pictures too so you can see that. So the guys are here today. Come on around here cutting back all the leaves and limbs. Look like they got their, got their gear here, pulling down trees. He's over there cutting something out. You come on back here, Tilla. Give him a shot from back up there. Oh my Lord. Look up there. So all these trees are growing over. This is just no good. You see all the debris is falling down there. So hopefully there won't be a lot of wood rot in the walls. That's where your budget really goes up when the walls get rotten. Okay. How's your audio, Taylor? Audio good? So this house was interesting because it has a beautiful sunroom back here where you can come out in the summertime and hang out without getting bitten by the bugs. Can you reach in here? This glass door. Look at this slider. How big this is. It's like an eight-foot slider. The one we have at home is only six feet. So this is a nice slab here. Wouldn't this is cool to come out and hang out in the summertime? Yep. So see everybody getting rocking and rolling here. Yeah, they're, they're getting rolling. You good, man. You can roll. You can roll, bro. So they're rolling on this stuff. So he's cutting down a tree now that was up on the house. See that tree is actually, I mean, I don't know why they let the tree grow up right on the daggone property. I mean, that's crazy. I don't know why people let trees grow up right on the property like that, too. We can, we can roll that. I don't understand. 
Why do they let it grow right up on the property like that? So you can see, just tying a rope up there, they're gonna probably pull it down back over here to fall on this side. We'll see if we get some of that footage later. Let's go out this way. He's got that little thing there. That's cool how they throw that little ball up there to pull the rope up. That's a little technique he's got going there. So he'll pull it up and then get the rope in there, pull it down. Like walking through a jungle, isn't it? Talking about walking through a jungle. Good Lord. Sheesh, so that thing is full. They already got one truck full of trees. I mean, all these probably used to be weeds that were grown into trees. This window, I don't know if we're gonna paint that window or try to redo it. Go ahead. As big as these trees oh, are. Here's the house. They were unattended for. For a long time. Can you see that? Has this been vacant for years? No, nah, dude. Remember I told you the dude had that TV? Yeah. That this is the house. Place. This is the place, buddy. Can you see? Got some light in here now? So when we first moved in, oh, I'm going to show you before a picture, y'all. One thing that I, that I have noticed on almost every distressed house we buy, flat screen TVs, large ones. This dude had an 85 inch here. And no disrespect to anybody. I just don't choose to spend my money on TVs. Don't think it's a wise investment. So, what is this? Oh, is this hardwood? Yeah, hardwoods. Look over here, Till. He was living here with that trash. He was just hanging out with yeah. trash on the floor. It's really interesting to see how people live. No disrespect to anybody. So you walk in the front door, that's your living room there. This is your dining area. You got a little bit of wood right here, but this whole kitchen, and the guy was living like this. It's like, man, that's a nice refrigerator here. Give him oh. a nice pan. Oh, no, the ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling. This is probably, oh. Yeah, this is lead-based paint. The thing is cracks. We don't want to breathe that in. I shouldn't have touched it. That's not good. Let me get out of there. Lead-based paint, I believe cracks with latex paint bins. So we're going to have to get a lead-based lead lead paint guy in there. We don't want to breathe that stuff in. Okay, what is this craziness? Oh, they haven't even done the upstairs yet, I guess. This is what I got to deal with, Roundup, homies. You can just flash in that bathroom. Complete bathroom reno. They just left everything for your boy to clean up. Oh my lord. What? Look, they it's left water. they left all this stuff in here. Let me give him a give him a nice pan of everything. At least it doesn't smell too bad in here. They don't smell too bad. We can still smell the smoke though. Yeah. So this is gonna be the primary bedroom. In here or no, no, we, I don't know. No, no. This house is a little weird. It does not have a bathroom in the primary. So this is one, two, three bedrooms up here. Reserved for Red Sox fans only. Oh. We should take that home. <laughs> Reserved for Red Sox fans. Who cares about a Red Sox? I'm not saying you shouldn't have your team. But my team is Team Haskins. As I would hope your team is team whatever your life is. Now look, I'm not mad if you have a team. No disrespect to you. All I'm saying is, don't spend more time, energy, and effort, and further money on your team than you do on your education and your future in this business. Okay. Give him a pan from there too, Tila. I gave him a pan from there. You did? Okay, cool. Oh, it was 
What's wrong with the stairs? They're bendy. Oh, they're broken. Oh, this is a basement? Yeah, this is a basement. Not really a basement, but the first floor. So they were using this as a bedroom. Oh. So if you got nice square footage for your bedroom, if you use this for a bedroom, and then they were using this for a closet. Oh man, I'm gonna use this next year for my Halloween costume. Oh, the, this, I got my wig oh, and everything. Oh, it came with the wig, I thought it was empty. Thank you. No. You know, sometimes. Put that down. Why, man, I did this. I can't wait to be Donald Trump. I get to be Donald Trump. Okay. Yay. What's that over there? I don't know. I couldn't get in that room when I was here before. Oh, it's dark. It's oh, this is a garage. Like okay, it. just stuff in there. Have you found any? Have you had any squatters in your house before? Mmm. I can't even remember, buddy. That ceiling. That's okay. Um, Nobody's living in there. All right, so let's hurry up so we can get back to the office and show you all these numbers. This is a nice little piece of equipment here. It's heavy. So what we're thinking is, wow, look at that work right there. That's crazy. What even? Oh, the hole in the door. Oh. That, okay. So we've got another bedroom here. And then this is another bathroom. So this will be your primary bathroom for whoever lives down here. This whole bathroom oh, is going to have no. to get redone. Show them that shower. Oh. You see this stuff here? Oh. I want to show you something, buddy. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't smoke. See that black stuff right there? You don't gotta zoom in if you don't want to. That's that's from tar. See, it's all on but here too. The thing too. is, they don't ever clean it. Can you clean tar? Hard to clean, buddy. Hard to clean. Then you come outside. Okay. Got the work oh, this here. The, huh? the door is blocked up by vines. What that is? Can I see how they're looking at? Yeah, yeah, man. This another house, man. Huh? Another huh? house. Oh. What in the back? Why not, buddy? I got my favorite costume. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> really something. That's cool. So, what else? Anything else you think we need to be seeing, Taylor? Uh, not, or is this part of the house? No, that's next door neighbors. Oh, okay. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was a long walkthrough. So this tree is going to be coming down in a minute. So what we'll do is we'll... In a sec, we'll go back to the office and let's go over some numbers so you see how this all works. Okay, so you've seen the property. You see what I'm up against. This is not going to be a light rehab. And I didn't even know all those trees when I went to first look at it. The trees look bad, but I had no idea. I was going to have to go in and grind out all those stumps, take out all those trees. I knew it was going to be some tree work, but good gracious. This tree work has cost me five to six thousand dollars already from finding out today. So. You just don't know what you're going to be spending on these rehabs. You have no idea. So we presumed there was going to be a certain amount, but once you start getting into it, you just don't know. All right. So let's go over this house flip. Let's go over the numbers to see what the profit's going to be. So the ARV on this one was roughly three hundred and fifty five thousand. OK, that's what we can sell it for when once we get done fixing it up. ARV is after repaired value. What can you sell it for? You cannot make an offer. People call me all the time. Chris, what should I offer? Should I offer this? Should I offer that? Should I offer this? I'm like, what can you sell it for? I cannot speak intelligently yet until I know what you can sell it for. I don't even know. Is it worth a million? Is it worth two million? Is it worth 500,000? Is it worth 50,000? I have no idea. So you got to know the ARV before you can make an offer to the homeowner. Did you know the house that you're looking at right now is financed with other people's money? I'm not talking about the bank loan. We actually work with ordinary people to put up all the money for us to go out there and buy and sell real estate. So I'd like to show you exactly how we do it so you can stop begging and praying and hoping that banks are going to finance your real estate empire because it didn't work like that for me. I want to show you my step-by-step -step proven system. This is exactly how we do it, how we raise money from regular people. We tap into the IRAs or whatever type of savings they have, and we get that money working inside of a house just like you're looking at right now. So the, the link to get started with the training is in the show notes below, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. 
the renovation on this one is going to be roughly 80,000. So now, <laughs> I thought it was going to be 70 when we went into this thing, but since all that landscaping just bumped us up, 70 to 74. Now, the thing that I want you to understand is you don't know where real estate is going to be regarding these renovations. I once had a lender wanted to work with me. He's, we were doing putting together a large deal he's, and he's making me have these repairs down to the dollar. And I'm like, brother, I, I can't operate like this. If you want me to have these, the, the renovation budget down to the dollar, I don't think I can do business with you because we actually work in increments of 5,000. So the, it's either going to be 70, 75, 80, 85, 65, because I don't know what it's, what it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to, what's going to be behind the walls when we go in there. I don't know how many joists are bad in the ceiling once I rip it out. You just don't know. So give yourself some grace. Love on yourself a little bit when you get in, into these deals if you don't know the exact number going in, okay? I've been doing this since 2004, and I'm wrong every single time. All right, Reynolds, 80000 all right, pay close attention here, Round Up homies. Please, this is where a lot of new investors really get hurt. Holding costs and costs to sell. Now, holding costs are going to be utilities, maintenance, taxes, insurance. That's stuff that you have to pay while you're holding onto the property. They either you pay them then or they accumulate over time. Now, you've got utility. You know, you still have to pay the light bill, electrical bill, the water bill while you have the property. You still got to go clean it up, cut the grass, make sure it's all pretty. And God forbid something get broken while you own it. God forbid something gets stolen. I never forget I had some one time these dudes took one of the diamond sawzall blades and cut into my lockbox, got the key out, and stole all my appliances. It's crazy. So you, you just don't know what obstacle is gonna pop up that, that's gonna raise up your holding costs. All right. Now interest. I usually anticipate about five thousand dollars worth of interest on these deals because we use private money. We work with ordinary people. Do you know there's enough people and enough money out there that will finance every piece of real estate you ever wanna buy? You just gotta get the training. So I will put my private money lending training, uh, training module in the video description below the show notes if you wanna get skilled on borrowing money and raising private money. So cost to sell, closing costs and realtor fees. Yes, I said realtor. We can get rid of the word realtor if you just work with me. I promise you. Repeat after me. Realtor. It's not realtor, okay? I won't get mad at you today. I'll, I'll give you a pass. <laughs> okay. Realtor fee, 6%. Now, what is 6% of 350000 Roughly 20 k Okay? But we use something. Fortunately, you follow the channel and you know what a flat fee listing broker is. We use a flat fee service. So a flat fee broker is somebody that will allow you to pay them up front in exchange for listing your property on the MLS. So you can slice that 3% away for listing it. So in real estate, you've got the selling, broker, selling side and the buyer side. Now I still have to pay <coughs> for the buyer's agent to bring a buyer to our deal. I can't cut that out, but I can cut out the 3% that I have to pay my listing broker. So I wanna know, since you've been following the channel, have you ever learned, have you learned how to use a flat fee broker and tell us how much money have you saved from using a flat fee service? I have saved hundreds of thousands from using a flat fee broker and tell me in the comments below, have I been able to assist you or have you been assisted by using a flat fee broker? Let me know. I'd love to know. So instead of paying 6%, I'm only paying 3% for the buyer's, buyer's agent. Now that even could get wiped out thanks to this new case with National Association of Realtors. We don't know what the future of realtor commissions are, right? They had to pay out all these billions of dollars. We don't know, is, is it fair to have a buyer's agent negotiate against my agent and then I have to pay them? So many things to consider. And I believe the future of real estate commissions are gonna change in the near, uh, well, what is it? I'm not, I'm not sure what month it is, but they're supposed to be changing how real estate agents get paid. And I believe this is for the good of our industry. How in the world? Can you have an account, a, a, a payment compensation be 110 years old? I mean, where else in the world, what other industry is paying people like they paid them back in, uh, back in 1913? This <laughs> is crazy. So competition, in my opinion, is good for our industry. So generally speaking, when you do a flip, your holding costs, cost of sale are gonna be roughly 10%. So on this deal, that would be 35,000. But since we use the flat fee broker, we can slash that 3% and half, the 6% and half, and we're only paying 3%. So my 
cost to sell holding costs are going to be roughly twenty-five thousand, right? That might be a little less. More, I, I like to I like to estimate high. Why don't we estimate high, Chris? Because if you estimate too low, then you're, it could really destroy your deal. If I say, well, I'm going to get that close, that holding cost down to fifteen thousand, and then and then it ends up being thirty, that could really crunch into my profit. So always go high, and then if you do less, that's more. That's like icing on the cake if you spend less. So that's something I've learned from doing this since 2004. So we got that purchase price. We paid $203,000 for this. Shout out to Steven, the wholesaler where we bought this from. Uh, his purchase price was $189. We paid him another I don't know, $13,000, $14,000 to buy his contract. They call it an entry fee now. I don't know, where did that come from? It's, it's, an, it's, it's an assignment fee. Okay, people are calling them entry fee now. I don't know where that came from. So the total purchase price with the with his contract and our assignment fee was two two oh three. So to get to our profit, we take our ARV after repaired value. That's what we can sell it for. You see, you cannot make an offer. People call me all the time around the country with my clients. Chris, what would you offer on this house? How much would you pay? What would you, what do you think is a good offer? I mean, I, I don't know. What, what what can we sell it for? What is the ARV? Is it worth a million? Is it worth two million? Is it worth fifty thousand? Is it worth five hundred thousand? I have no idea. You cannot make an offer until you know what you can sell it for. Okay, ARV three fifty five, reno eighty, holding cost cost to sell twenty five thousand, and back out your purchase price. Let me do that again. How do we get to our profit? This is gross profit. You take your ARV, back out renovation cost to sell holding cost purchase price. That's going to be your profit. Our profit is roughly fifty thousand dollars on this one. Not a bad day for three to four months of work. However, you're not going to get rich flipping houses, y'all. It's just not going to happen unless you're doing 20, 30 houses a year because you got expenses and you got taxes, you got marketing, all that stuff. So the real goal and why I need you to share this stuff is to buy and hold. Okay. The real ultimate goal in real estate is to hold on to the assets. So we take the money that we make, that we earn from the flips and we buy income producing assets. So please share this information, share this video as we pass 134,000 subscribers, subscribe to the content and make sure you like this video. We are here. My commitment is to help you build your real estate empire so you can have some type of financial freedom for yourself and your family. Chris Haskins over and out. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.